I had a couple of viewers ask about uh, the schematic for the Keithley um, 619, and I do have the surface manual. You can find that online. And so, you know, if you want to take a look at it, you're welcome. There's a, um, a block diagram here. It, it's not very useful. There's a, uh, a power supply, and there's some add-on things you can add, like uh, IEEE and stuff, and there's an A to D and a filter, and then these two modules. So uh, that one really, that one really doesn't tell you much at all. This this is this one's pretty good, but it's a little difficult to understand. So they give you a block diagram and show you kind of what's all going on in here. But that one's that one's that one's confusing too. So uh, let's uh, uh, let's take a look at um, well, let's take a look at let's take a look at this first. Let's take a look at this first. All right, so this is the schematic of the analog input, okay? And so the, uh, the, the input is right over here. And it, it comes into the instrument, into, into this front end. Uh, there's some transistors on the, uh, some uh, resistors on the top here, so it looks like there's some gain stages and stuff on top. And then uh, there's a bunch of relay drivers over here, so there's a bunch of relays in here. So if you, if you read the schematic, there's these funny little symbols here. Uh, these fun little things here are actually a coaxial shielded relay. So they're real, real expensive shielded relay. And so there's relay here, relay here, relay here, relay. So there's a whole bunch of switches that, that, that you can change the gain and you can, you can, you can like connect this to ground and you can do all kinds of things in it. So all, there's a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of those, uh, those relays in there. And so the, 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 the right-hand side is just all of the relays, uh, all the coils here and uh, the, the, the relay driver. So you can kind of ignore the, the right-hand side of the schematic. And everything here is on the, uh, the left-hand side of the schematic. But it's still complicated and it still doesn't really, doesn't really tell you what's going on. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what, what the thing really is. Uh, so here's my, here's my block diagram. All right. So let's this down here. Okay. And where is my pencil here? All right. So using those relays and stuff, you can put the uh, amplifier into different modes. Uh, so over here, we have, uh, have it configured to measure volts. Now the input is always a high, a ground, and a shield. Okay, that's that tri-ax. And so the, 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 the center um, signal here is shielded, and then, and then those two things are shielded. So it's a coax inside of a coax. And so uh, this is the, uh, the guard and the ground and the input. So the input comes in and it goes into a um, non-inverting amplifier. And so these, uh, these resistors can switch, okay? And you can change gain. So that's how the volts work. Um, and then this goes into an A to D, right? So that's it, that's it. Um, the, the machine is a 6800 microprocessor, so that kind of tells you the vintage 6800. <laughs> All right, so let's say you want to measure amps. Well, then you can figure it this way. Um, the amps are current, so the current comes in, and uh, the other input is ground. So the op amp needs to do everything it can to make sure that the, the two are both zero. It needs to make sure that the plus and the minus are both the same. So the, the current that comes in has to have an equal and opposite current coming the other direction to null it out. And that's done through this resistor. Um, and so the output of this thing loops back around. So this is a, uh, you could call it a current to voltage converter. You could call it a trans impedance amplifier. You call it different names. But it basically takes voltage and turns it into, uh, current and turns it into voltage. So the current, current operates this way. And uh, it's clever, so it uses the same same switches. So we have a bunch of switches here, and we can use those switches in, in this circuit as well. So you don't need to complicate, overly complicate things. You have the switches and the, and the, and the resistors anyway. So they're used this way in volts, and they're used this way in amps, OK? So, uh, so those are the two ways to do volts and amps. All right. And so then to measure ohms, uh, you put it back into voltage mode. OK, so we're measuring volts. And uh, we are going to uh, have a current source. And we put that current source into our resistor on the outside. And we create a voltage. And then we read that voltage. And so, and so this is a precision current source. And guess what? We have all these resistors around here, so boom. We're, we're going to use all those resistors again to be able to switch in and out different currents. And uh, there's actually a feedback path here that takes into account 
uh, things, and it, it's a precise, it's a precise, uh, it's a precise current source. So don't don't worry about uh, it looking just like a resistor. It's a little more complicated than that, but it's basically this. Okay, so those are the those are the ways to do it: uh, volts, amps, and ohms, and and you're done. You're done. And you look at that and you go, oh, well, oh, okay, well, that's way, way, way too simplistic. This thing has 20 tera ohm input, you know. Uh, you know, how, how do they do that? And uh, so here's the real schematic, okay? And so the input comes in here, and it goes through the one meg resistor, and it goes into an op amp. And that's it. That is it. It is this circuit, identically to this circuit. It is this circuit. It uses one very, very special op amp, an AD515, and I'll show that to you. But basically, this instrument, the schematic of this instrument is so simple. Um, it goes to show you that a lot of times making measurements is not about how clever you are in designing and stuff, you choose the right component. Now in this particular case, the, the reason that nobody else except Keithley can make this thing is, is because they understand leakage. So there's a whole bunch of separated, uh, a whole bunch of separated grounds. There's the, uh, there's the uh, measurement ground, there's an analog ground, there's a digital ground, there's a chassis ground. All of these grounds are separate. And uh, I'm not gonna rip mine in part and show you, Somebody else has already done that online. I'll, I'll see if I can remember to put a link in. Uh, somebody else already opened up theirs. And everything is on Teflon standoffs. So everything is point to point. Everything is on Teflon standoffs. There is no leakage. These relays are very, very, very expensive relays, okay? And these <laughs> resistors are probably expensive resistors. And the capacitor, this capacitor right here is probably, or this one right here, is probably uber expensive. It has to be really, really good. And, and, I'll, and I'll, figure, I'll show that what, why that's particularly true. So this whole thing is uh, all about being very vigilant in the physical design of it, and then very diligent at Choosing the right components, and that's that's all the ball game. They probably cho spend months choosing every single component to make sure make sure it's going to operate correctly. Um, okay, so now that we know it's just a single op amp, what about the rest of the instrument? It's got to go through a bunch of other stuff, right? Well, it's um, let's talk about this op amp first, okay? It is an analog. Remember, this thing was designed in 1980. Okay, uh, 79. Thing was thing was designed in 1979. So you have to think back then. What was available? 1979. Well, this thing was available. Um, analog devices, precision, low power, FET input electrometer op amp. It was an op amp specifically designed for electrometer measurements, okay? And you can look at its spec, you know, uh, 75 femtoamps of bias current, um, very low drift, uh, low noise, um, high impedance. Uh, the impedance is something, something outrageous and stuff. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so if you take a look at this thing, it has great open loop gain, uh, 100,000. Um, let's see, input bias current, 150 femtoamps. The, 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 the fancy one is 75 femtoamps. Uh, impedance is, uh, uh, let's see here, where is input impedance? Input impedance, uh, differential, uh, uh, basically, one picofarad in parallel with 10 to the 15th ohms. Uh, yeah, this thing is just this thing is just outrageous. And you know, it was in 1979. It was 24 dollars. Uh, got the price tag down here. I bet you, I bet you 24 dollars was you know like 240 dollars. Uh, it, it was an expensive op amp. Um, and then they tell you how to build electrometers. Uh, in the back here, and they tell you about noise and how to how to use this thing, how to put it in different modes and stuff. Anyway, uh, nice nice uh, nice data sheet, specifically specifically for electrometers, right? Okay, so 
so now we have the magic. It's one chip. The magic is one chip. So you have to be careful with this thing. You don't want to blow up that one chip. Um, but you also need a very, very good analog to digital converter and good digital filtering and stuff. So there is some software uh, uh, in, that needs to be put in place. Now, you couldn't really buy an A to D that could handle the job this has to do. And in fact, most five and a half, six and a half digit voltmeters all operate on a particular principle called a dual slope integrator. So we need to talk about dual slope integrators. Uh, and it's a type of A to D, all right? So let's, uh, let's change the page here. So what is a dual slope integrator? Okay, well, first of all, what is an integrator? Okay, an integrator is an op amp uh, with a capacitor on it, on the feedback. And if you input a current, and then the output will ramp up like a sawtooth. And then if you uh, reverse the polarity of the current, it will, it will ramp in the other direction. So you can ramp up and you can ramp down, okay? Depending if you're putting in positive current or negative current. Well, how do you, how do you put in current? Well, that's really easy. You put a resistor and then you put in a voltage. So the voltage across that resistor is the current, and then it gets integrated by this capacitor, and boom, you can create these, these slopes, okay? So uh, let's imagine we're gonna do a particular thing. We're going to, we're gonna input, um, we're gonna input 10 volts, okay? So we're gonna put in 10 volts, okay? And we're gonna turn this thing on, and we're gonna start at ground, and that we're gonna let it ramp. And it's gonna it's gonna ramp and it's gonna ramp and it's gonna ramp, okay? Because we have 10 volts across one mega ohm, okay? That's gonna set the current on the input and it's gonna do this particular ramp, okay? And we're gonna ramp up to some to some voltage, okay? Let's say we ramp up to one volt, okay? We're gonna ramp up to one volt, all right? And then we're gonna turn off the plus 10, and we're gonna put in some unknown. Okay, so un, some some unknown some unknown voltage, and we're going to put it in negative negative voltage. Well, it's going to ramp down in the opposite direction, and it'll ramp down faster or slower depending on on its voltage because its current will either be higher or lower. And then we'll get and then we'll we'll come back down here to zero again. Well, there's some length of time that it took uh, 10 volts to ramp up to one volt. And then it, there's some other length of time it took for some other voltage to ramp down. But it ramped down exactly one volt too. There was one volt difference here. There's one volt difference here, right? So let's say it takes time T, okay? Well, it took plus 10 volts times T to get to one volt. And it took this other thing that we don't know what it is, some, some unknown voltage, it took it times T prime. And now you have this equation. And you can calculate the voltage that it re was required to do this other thing. So this is the dual slope integrator. It took this long in one slope and it took this long in another slope. And then you can determine the voltage by these uh, ratios. Okay, well, if you have a microprocessor, da, 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 you can count, okay? And you can count. And you can say, ooh, we got, it took, you have like a comparator. And that comparator goes up and it fires here at one volt. And you can say, oh, it took, you know, N counts. And then you turn it on, you let it go the other way, and then you have a comparator that fires at zero volts. And you go, okay, it took N prime counts to go this direction. And that is your A to D. And these can be very, very long times, right? This could be one minute of integration. Uh, you know, it could be six seconds, right? You, the, you get to choose by what, capacit what uh, capacitor you choose, what resistor you use, right? C and the R, and then what voltages you use. So what's really required is to have a very accurate capacitor. You've got to have a really, really good capacitor that has zero leakage, none. <laughs> and then you have to have it in a place where there's no currents or anything, it's gotta be isolated. You have to have a very accurate plus 10. So this is a reference voltage. And you have to have some really, really accurate reference voltage so you can go up a known amount and then come down an unknown amount, right? So, so you need some really good components, you need a really good voltage, and then you just need a microprocessor to do everything else, okay?
Well, that's what they have inside this thing, right? The 68, uh, 68,000 microprocessor is going to handle the whole job. And uh, this is a diagram of their dual slope integrator. So this is kind of in the uh, troubleshooting guide. And so it has a, a, a slope here, and then it has a slope here. And so it has a, uh, a known and an unknown. I don't remember which is which here. I think this is the, no, uh, the unknown, and this is the known. And then they measure and everything, right? But, but I've never seen this before, but they're very, very clever. They say, we need to treat that capacitor as good as we can treat it. And the capacitor might build up charge, and we just need to make sure it's kind of like settled down. And so they charge it, and they discharge it, and they charge it, and they discharge it, and they charge it, and they discharge it, charge it, and they discharge it. And they kind of get that, that capacitor kind of feeling happy. And then they go do the, uh, do the integration. So yeah, Keith Lee knows what they're doing. <laughs> anyway, but it is, a, it, is a dual slope, it is a dual slope integrator, all right? So uh, let's go back to the, uh, go back to the thing here. Uh, so voltage mode, current mode, ohms mode, and then the output of these op amps go to that dual, that dual slope integrator. Right, and uh, that's it. That's the whole electrometer. And uh, if you want to start the schematic, yeah, there's not much in here. Uh, there's this one expensive op amp, and then everything else is somewhere else. And then there's these nice precision resistors, but they don't actually need to be precision because each one has a potentiometer on it. So this is the calibration. You calibrate each one of these to give you exactly uh, the right current. Right, so you calibrate this thing for the, for its current, and there's one, two, three, four, five. So this, these these calibrate the current, and then there's that voltage source that I talked about. You have to have a really really nice voltage uh, source. Well, they have this expensive Zener diode. So this this Zener diode here is an expensive one, and it's a temperature compensated, and and then it is calibrated using this potentiometer. So the uh, reference voltage is calibrated with this potentiometer, and um, and then in addition to that. You need to treat the op amp well, so you need to make sure its bias currents are exactly zeroed. And so there's an adjustment on that to get all the bias currents out of that, even though it's only, you know, 150 femto amps, you need to zero this thing out. And then uh, you want to make sure you know what zero is. So when you do these measurements, you have to make sure that you're not measuring something that's not there. You, know, you need to measure zero and trust zero. And that's what this uh, uh, switch does here. You switch to zero. When you're doing this dual slope integration, part of the cycle, you're actually measuring ground. So you're integrating on ground, and if there's any offsets, it'll show up. So uh, that's part of the circuit as well. Measuring to ground, measuring the input, measuring the, uh, uh, measuring the uh, calibrated uh, voltage standard. And then uh, that's true in voltage mode and current mode, and then in... Uh, uh, Ohm's mode, you're basically using this section over here as a current source. Uh, this thing is actually set up to generate exactly one volt, and then that one volt goes through these different uh, different resistors. The top resistor here is 100 ohms, and the bottom resistor here is around uh, 4 gig ohms. And uh, so, yeah, um, there you go. That's how the electrometer works.